the most insane punishments during the reign of Ivan the Terrible. In today's world, the word terrible can be used to characterize just about anything, from an especially unpleasant dinner to a natural disaster that claims the lives of millions of people. When it was a moniker for the Russian Tsar, Ivan IV in the 16th century, the word evoked images of a mighty and fearsome leader. One of the most paranoid, murderous, and unpredictable men to ever run the country suggests that perhaps the contemporary meaning of terrible is not that far off the mark. What then was it about Ivan used as a method of punishment in his reign? His Paranoia The characteristic that brought Ivan his most notoriety was his paranoia. Even when there was little evidence to imply it, he persistently believed that people were planning against him. He believed that individuals were conspiring against him, and in addition, he did not require any evidence to accuse and punish someone, and he frequently subjected his victims to torture and murder on the basis of his gut instinct rather than any actual evidence. Ivan suffered from paranoia and was also prone to outbursts of wrath from time to time. His son and daughter-in-law were involved in one of the most infamous instances that helped solidify his reputation as a terrible king, and it was because of them. He was rumored to have caused his pregnant daughter-in-law to miscarry by beating her because she did not dress modestly while she was pregnant, which resulted in the kid being lost. Being boiled to death was an experience that was considerably more gruesome than it sounds. This widespread practice which involved placing criminals in a cauldron of boiling water over a blazing fire and watching as they writhed in agony for hours was yet another straightforward but effective method of putting an end to people in the most excruciating way possible before they were put to death. The victim's body would be cooked from the inside out if they were subjected to the experience of being boiled alive and modern tales of persons falling into hot springs suggest that they would be conscious for most of the ordeal. The smell of meat being cooked could provide malicious observers with an additional source of enjoyment. In addition, the skin would burn red and blister, and simply taking a breath in the stifling heat would be agonizing. Ivan the Terrible is credited with coming up with the idea to put those who were accused of treason in boilers while they were still alive. There is information that after the mass executions, Ivan the Terrible determined the day of death and method of execution for each of his courtiers. For example, one of his courtiers was ordered to have his hands, one leg, and head severed, while another was ordered to have his stomach cut, then have his legs, arms, and head severed. On another hand, he also attributed with the following saying, To hunt hares, you need a lot of hounds. To fight adversaries, a lot of warriors, who, having reason, will execute his citizens for no reason. Being Impaled on Sharp Objects at the very least, impalement, which refers to the act of putting someone to death by penetrating their body with a pointed instrument, can take place in one of two primary ways. In the technique known as longitudinal impalement, a pointed spike was placed into the victim's anus in such a way that it followed the vertical direction of the body. Ideally, the tip of the stake would come out of the victim's mouth or chest cavity, and then the transversal impalement which consisted of driving a stake into any area of the body and out the opposite side. For example, the stake may have been driven through the stomach or the heart. It was possible for victims to survive anywhere from a few seconds to many days depending on the form of impalement that was used and, as a result, whose internal organs were harmed. There are numerous examples of leaders throughout history who are remembered for their fondness for impaling foes. Being Flayed Alive the phrase, I'll skin you alive, has a history that is both very scary and quite genuine. It was popular among previous generations as a way to reprimand youngsters who were being disobedient. The victims of this excruciating manner of execution had their entire skin removed before they were put to death. Skinning a person while they are still alive can result in the victim's death from a number of different causes including hypothermia, infection, loss of blood, and shock. In the carvings of Iron Age Mesopotamia, which date back to roughly 883 BC and even earlier, depictions of opponents being slain can be seen. A particularly gruesome practice is described on the Rassam Cylinder, which was carved around 636 BC and may now be found in the British Museum. According to this cylinder, they took off their skins and covered the city wall with them. Ivan gave the Swedes no credit for their resistance after the Tsar's hand was cut off, considering that even bystanders were at risk of being hacked to pieces or having their intestines ripped out. Chopping off head and hanging 
During the time of Ivan the Terrible, Russia had a reputation for using extreme forms of punishment for minor offenses. These included beheadings and hangings by the neck, legs, or rib. On the other hand, this time period is typically linked to exceptionally gruesome forms of capital punishment. It is believed, for instance, that one of the preferred methods of execution in those days was a stake, which is one of the most painful forms of punishment. The art of the executioner was to not damage the vital organs in the process and to not inadvertently save the convict from suffering. In point of fact, this method of punishment was used rather frequently in the 16th century, though it is quite unlikely that Ivan the Terrible gave it a special preference over other forms of capital punishment. Torture on Females Ivan was a true sadist and rapist to the core of his being. He boasted to himself that throughout his life he had raped a thousand different young women. It's essential to emphasize that he did not suffer from any mental illness or insanity. He was completely conscious of everything that he was doing. Fear of the divine wrath would occasionally terrify him into repenting and writing down his sins and crimes, but he would eventually go back to killing and raping people again. In addition to this, in front of dying men, Ivan's Oprichniki would rape their wives, daughters, and mothers while the men were still alive. This added insult to injury. There is not a single one of these stories that are a fairy tale or a myth. Rather, they are all true accounts that have been documented in a variety of papers, as well as the confessions of the Tsar himself, who was prone to episodes of regret on occasion. While he watched, he would give orders to the murderers to rape the wives and children of the people he killed, and then to do whatever they pleased with them before putting an end to their lives. When it came to the wives of the peasants, he gave the order that they should be stripped nude and driven into the forest like animals. But the murderers hid in ambush there and waited for these women to come walking through the woods so that they could torture, kill, and dismember them. This man's entire clan and family were wiped out as a result of his actions and did not leave a single survivor among his in-laws or other relatives. During the atrocities committed on Fyodorov's estate, the Tsar inflicted a disproportionate amount of pain on women. According to one account, the women and girls were stripped naked and in this state would be forced to catch chickens in the field. The reign of Ivan was known for its cold-blooded cruelty. Everyone whom Ivan suspected of being a traitor was put through horrific ordeals before being put to death. Execution methods that were particularly popular included being roasted over an open fire, being boiled alive, being impaled, or being pulled apart by horses limb from limb. To live in the territory that was governed over by Ivan was to live in a constant state of fear. This was vividly proved by the awful fate that fell on Novgorod, which was Russia's second largest city and Moscow's most formidable adversary at the time. Hey, that's all for today's video. We'll be right back with more such videos soon. Until then, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to our channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.